Women's involvement in the North American real estate business is known to have occurred since its establishment as a legitimate business in the 1840s. Back then, women's skills were mostly used as office and clerical resources. Still, by the 1880s, women were moving into the roles of agents and brokers, yet at a relatively slow rate. Today, the real estate business looks rather female-oriented, with no room for the glass ceiling that keeps women from rising in some organizations. In 1989, Calgary realtor Astrid Grunberg wanted a job that would be more family-friendly, and she embraced a career as a real estate agent. Then, in 2000, Astrid founded a residential and commercial real estate company, which she named Unison Realty Group Limited. Today, she's the president of Unison. Astrid is also the mother of three, all of whom are involved in the Unison's business, Ken, Jessica, and Alexandra. Ken acts as a broker and shares in the ownership of the firm along with his mother, Astrid. Alexandra acts as a realtor, and Jessica acts as a property management agent. Astrid, what prompted you to found Unison? I wanted to have a company. It's hard to start, and we have been going through a lot of up and downs. But when you find the right people to do it with, it's a pleasure from there on. Overall, it's a very, very good, you know, decision. I started 10 years ago, and we have our own business since then, and the whole family have been involved with it. Uh, Ken Kaim, that is the broker of the company, Jessica Kaczynski, that is in charge of property management, and Alexandra Kaim, that is also a realtor. Is your firm run differently because a woman leads it? Yes and no. Because I work with my son, we have a balance in that. So no, it's not. I'm wondering what your typical workday is like. Well, they start very early in the morning. At 7 o'clock, I'm always up. At 9 o'clock, I'm usually in the office. In between that, I do some paperwork at home. Uh, I am in the office at around noon. And then after that, it's going for lunch. And then after that, it's uh, showings or, you know, fixing apartment because we do a lot of furnished apartment that we furnish ourselves too. That in the property management. And in the real estate, it's showing places. And sometimes it can go to 10, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, that's a usual day. So we have to have a family that is very understanding about our work and our time. What's the biggest change you've witnessed in the real estate business in the last 21 years? First of all, price. Prices of the house have been from very small prices to very high prices. Prices is one of them. The other, the other one, and the big one, is the qualification from the bank to our client. Before, it was very easy to get houses to our client. Now, they have to go through a lot of paperwork to be approved to buy a house. So that's one of the bigger changes. The interest was very high before, when I started in the business 21 years ago. Very easy to get a house to the client, but very high interest. Now the interests are very good. It's difficult to get houses to the client, that the client qualify for those homes. So um, I would say yes, it's a lot of changes. But every change is, everything changed in this life, so, so this is not different. A multilingual team of 23 licensed associates surrounds you, and everyone marvels at your remarkable energy. What's your secret? Optimism and understanding the problem that others have. To be, try to be always in the right places at the right time and to appreciate people uh, that are around me. How many languages do your associates speak all together? Eight. Myself too. Spanish and English. You seem unfailingly optimistic and upbeat with people. Has that been the key to your success? Absolutely, yes. Is that the way I see life? If you were starting over in business today, would you follow the same course? Yes. Exactly the same course. Thank you. You're welcome. If we look at the overall selling aspect, do both men and women involved in real estate show similar strengths and weaknesses? I would say so. But uh, men are a little more budget-orientated. Women are a little more uh, concerned about the home for their families. 
Do men take a more critical look than a woman may do when it comes to the selling facet? Again, the same thing with the budget uh, concerns. Men are a little more privy to that. Men are a little more budget concerned. Um, they're a little more involved in the financing aspect. I would say, again, this is a generalization. Uh, and then women are more inclined uh, for residential real estate uh, to find out where the schools and shopping, transportation, all those types of things are around their communities and, and uh, what type of home they're settling in. Do men sell their properties more on the aspect of investments? Uh, I would say, I would say uh, commercially equally. Uh, I would say not when you talk about residential real estate. Commercial, of course, it's all about the bottom line. Are women straighter forward, especially to the women buyers? Um, I would say yes. I would say they're probably more comfortable. That's probably the only reason. I would say so, I would say so. yeah, just because of the comfort levels there. Does a woman's charm change men's minds into buying homes? Of course. Of course it does. Women are very charming. I think they uh, definitely pre present a different perception on the home and give them a different uh, uh, dimension on what to look at when purchasing a home. So I think they have the ability to uh, kind of showcase what uh, a home would look like. Um, if they, for instance, if they walk into an empty home, they're probably a little more capable of describing uh, the design or the decoration or colors or um, you know, the, the garden, sun exposure, that type of stuff. So, Does a woman present a home show better than a man because she has a better eye for placing items around the home to appeal to buyers? Uh, I would say, uh, generally speaking again, yes. I would say women are a little more creative in their approach and have a little more of a flair for interior design. Uh, for instance, the relationship that my mother and I have, I uh, basically work on the deal and then She's the one that goes in and, you know, does decoration if a home needs to be uh, furnished or uh, decorated or if there's a space that needs to have some sort of, uh, uh, you know, renovation design to it, uh, she takes care of that. You know, myself, I just don't have the, the, the flair for that. Do you multitask? Yeah, I multitask every day. You know, I wake up in the morning and usually go for a run and then get, uh, get to the office and uh, the first couple hours is basically responding to everything that's going on in the office. I have to deal with a lot of uh, uh, realtor-related issues since I'm the broker for them. And then uh, usually I move on to other things as far as overlooking everything, our property management uh, division, relocation, uh, real estate sales, um, all those aspects. So. Canada-wide, we hear considerable doom and gloom about housing these days. Yeah, I think uh, nationwide, uh, we're in for a tough haul. It's, it's obviously, everybody sees what's going on in the uh, news. Uh, things nationwide are very tough. Unemployment rate is fairly high, and uh, it's just tough to get a mortgage these days uh, for a beginning, uh, beginner home family. So I think, yes, it's... Uh, it's a little tough, but we're fortunate to be living in Alberta, and uh, specifically Calgary. There's a lot of uh, oil companies spending a lot of money in, uh, in Alberta. So the trickle-down effect obviously is creating more jobs. A little more disposable income is uh, freeing up now that we're seeing compared to a couple years ago. Um, interest rates are still low. Uh, the only challenge now is, is really the financing, really, that is uh, toughened up. Uh, over the last few years and uh, prices are are stabilizing they're uh, definitely not increasing but they're not decreasing dramatically so uh, it all obviously depends on what sector of the city you're purchasing in but uh, for the most part it's uh, pretty consistent uh, commercial leases yes definitely fewer vacancies than there were small businesses are starting to come back and uh, revive I think bigger business for sure, bigger lease spaces are being taken up. That's a huge difference. Uh, so I think, yeah, commercial on the commercial side, leases are uh, a lot fewer vacancies. Commercial lease prices, again, they, they haven't really gone up that much. Um, they're pretty stable compared to what they were a few years ago. I think we're going to experience a little bit of an upswing here. Uh, how long that lasts, I don't know. A lot of people are thinking a year, two years, three years. 
Um, you know, nobody really has that answer. But uh, as far as interest rates, you know, you'd have to predict that they're going to go up at some time. They just can't get any lower. So, uh, so yeah, I think um, I think prices will stabilize, and I think they will probably go down a little bit. Um, but I think overall, we're going to be pretty consistent here in the next few years. Unison boasts privately owned offices and a multilingual team of 29 licensed associates and employees. The firm targets the heart of the residential market, lands commercial premises listings, engages in property rental procedures and management operations, and renders relocation-related services.